Hey guys, how's it going? It's Kara here with another Awaken Chaos Era video. And in today's video, we're gonna be breaking down the top 10 epic heroes here in Awaken Chaos. I know this is a long video, so I put timestamps linked down below so you can see specific heroes. You just wanna check them out real quick. And if you're looking for more Awaken Chaos content, be sure to subscribe. Definitely a lot more videos on the way. And with all that being said, let's get into the video here. So kicking off this list is going to be William. Uh, he's easily one of the best epics. If I was rating this list, he'd probably be top three, in my opinion, as an epic hero. But the reason why he's so good is his passive here, where basic abilities of all team members deal 50% more damage, which is great. You ascend him, it does even more damage, which is really cool. And then he has this A1 here, which is very useful, deals 50% damage to an enemy. And also, if you're a support uh, character, you pretty much are going to do absolutely zero damage. So that's really, we don't really care about this, but being able to launch a joint attack with a random ally is amazing. And you're able to pull in your damage dealers, be able to help them do more damage, being able to attack at a turn or do more things within a round is fantastic. And then this is one of the better parts of his kit here, which is his A2. So it grants one stack of counterattack to all team members and applies defense up two to the main target for three turns. So how counterattack works in this game is that it's actually just a stack that stays. So you can actually plan it and it's only on a three turn cooldown. So if you're dealing with waves of enemies, you can make sure to do this first. And then by the time you get to the boss or something, you'll be able to have this ready to go again. And then that counterattack is on there indefinitely until someone actually gets hit. Uh, most of these games, I'm used to raid where it's like, the counterattack for two turns, for example, and then if no one attacks them, then it just goes away. Whereas in this game, they'll always be guaranteed to at least counterattack once unless someone cleanses the buffs or something like that, or they get CC'd, which I think is really great and you can really rely on it. Even though it's not two counterattacks, I kind of prefer this, especially in this game, being able to just have the counterattacks on the characters. So very useful especially in combination with his passive like his kit synergizes very well together where he's calling in people to a basic attack he uh, is having people counterattack, which is using their basic attack and then to top it off ult here which is great he has um, essentially the 100 damage doesn't really matter too much but 80 percent chance to play defense down for two turns which is awesome obviously it would be better if it was 100 percent, but he's already so good even if he didn't have this ult he's easily an s tier epic character next on the list is gonna be mary in shadow blood a fantastic character reason why she's good is she's like a boss killer and also when it comes to hard um, waves of enemies she's still very useful but most of the time it's going to be taking her into being able to handle people with a lot of hp so she's a damage dealer that you don't really necessarily need to build damage you just want speed and you want survivability and Passive here is grants this character a 30% chance of launching a joint attack alongside attacking with an ally, which is awesome because if you look at her auto attack here, it deals 50% damage to an enemy plus true damage equal to 3% of the target's max health. So that's where a lot of her damage is going to come from and her usefulness. This is a character that you're not going to really use as a farmer or in the beginning of the game as you're progressing. So the earlier you pull her, the more you're probably going to not want to use her. But later on, as you get to wanting to tackle bosses, she's actually going to be pretty clutch for you because the 3% of the target's max health is really going to start to add up in the harder bosses. And then we got this right here, removes all negative effects, deals 100% damage to an enemy after healing 30% of the max health. So I like this. It's not like 30% of the damage dealt. It's 30% of her max health. And then she clears all negative effects, which is incredibly useful. Notably in the Ash dungeon with the, the bomb, you were able to clear the bomb with her with this passive but now the bomb is random you can't predict where the bomb's going to be so yes it's still good but not nearly as good as it used to be before the um, buff or before the patch that just came out and then lastly her ult's really cool too where it deals 100% damage to all enemies plus true damage equal to 8% of the target's max health so it does a little bit more than double uh, her auto attack in, in true damage and then this unholy redemption buff for the character for two turns and then if we look here the unholy redemption buff is 50 percent damage reduction and 40 percent lifesteal so you're already building her more tanky than most damage dealers and she's giving herself lifesteal and she's giving herself damage reduction so she's a very survivable unit um only issue with her is her um, base stats are pretty low especially the c tier defense is awful b tier health is not ideal but uh, because of the fact that she's doing everything percentage based you can kind of help her out by get, making her way tankier than normal DPS characters are. So amazing character easily makes top 10 list here. Okay, so next is gonna be Santis. And this is easily one of the most useful and impactful characters I think that's in the game right now. 
She's amazing. And what's really cool about her is that she is very accessible. And if you go to the altar here, you can fuse her. And what you need to do is you need to take these four rares, so or elite characters, and then level them up. You, you also need to ascend them uh, three times. So it's not super accessible, but relatively accessible for an epic hero. And then you'll be able to craft her. So if you do a decent amount of pulls, eventually, or hopefully, you'll be able to level these characters up. Some of these are actually pretty decent. For example, a Joseph here is actually a good rare character. So you kind of got to make the choice here. But I think for bosses, this character is amazing at being able to handle bosses. She's good in Ash and she's good in Queen of Tides. And in the bosses here, those are the two most impactful ones when it comes to gear. And there's videos out when it comes to Queen of Tides where you could beat beat Queen of Tides on manual with 12. It's like Santis and then a couple people that are like level 40 and a couple rare characters. Um, she's just so good. And then she's also using Ash. Like I use her in my Ash team as well. So she's a good value pick. You can crush your rares into making her. Um, big thing is she gets way better when you five ascend her versus just the normal um, when you get her, but she's still great and I think worth going for even without that. So if we go back here, um, what what her kit is, is she's a poison dealer. And then looking at her stats too, she has amazing base stats, especially for being a character that is built for doing damage to bosses because she has A tier health, she has A tier speed. And speed. this is the first part of the game that speed actually starts to matter for you, is gonna be these bosses here because you don't wanna uh, you're actually going to need like four, uh, 140 speed or 150 speed to be able to actually go before these bosses. So her having a tier speed makes it very easy to be able to go first. And uh, because all of her damage is going to be poison based, you don't really need to build her damage wise. She's just like Marion Shadowblood where you can build her very tanky and uh, still do a ton of damage. So her passive here, which is attacks against enemies affected by poison, have a 50% chance of applying an additional poison for two turns. And so it becomes a 100% chance when you ascend her. So when she's five ascended, she immediately goes um, to a way better character, but I still think she's good even without that. Then we have uh, deals 80% damage to an enemy and applies poison for two turns. And then when she attacks again, she has a 50% chance to apply two poisons. So it really starts to snowball, especially when you have her fully ascended. And I don't feel bad about recommending a full like five ascension character with this, at least not as much, because I know it's an insane amount of resources, but at least you can farm the rares with this character. If I were to say this about Jacob, Jacob becomes a character that's absolutely insane with five ascension, but it's hard for me to recommend that because there's no way to farm or do a synthesis for the character. Whereas with her, there is at least. So even though, yes, it's going to be a while, uh, just keep that in mind of how much more useful she's going to be and how much cloud Content she's going to clear for you then um next is going to be deals 150 percent damage to an enemy and duplicates all poison effects affecting them onto another random enemy which is pretty cool but mainly you're going to be targeting the boss that's kind of like a side thing and then lastly uh deals 120 20 uh, percent damage to all enemies and applies poison for two turns prolongs the duration of all poison effects on enemies by one turn which is insane so you can pair her with william she attacks once counter attack goes she attacks again that's three poisons then she ults that's now five poisons and then all the previous ones are extended so just her alone can in two turns can apply five poisons all all extended to at least two to three turns uh, she's insane and really helps out and be able to beat queen of tides and being able to beat um ash so she has the right typing for both of them and then you pair her with like a mary pair her with william pair her with there's a lot of characters you can that work well with her uh gangelo the legendary character that increases uh damage of poisons here she, she's easily one of the best most impactful epic characters you can possibly get it's just in the early game she's going to be absolutely worthless for you because she doesn't help you clear the waves but eventually she's going to be one of your most sought after characters and luckily they're allowing you to fuse for her which i think is very cool or windstrex so this character is for the most part an arena specialist where what she does is she has this move here grant speed up to and attack up to all team members for two turns she has decent speed she's not the fastest character in the game but she's fast and you're going to see her a ton in arena and it's really going to come down to who has the faster wind strikes because if she's faster she goes she can stun the other wind strikes and then she can speed up give plus 50 speed and not only is she going to be faster but all your characters are probably going to be faster than your wind strikes it's very hard to um, beat the speed of 50 speed so and nowadays in arena the defenses are all tanky based so uh, not 
the I think the Windstrucks mirror matches are, might be going to the wayside, especially on the higher ranks. But still, an amazing arena character that f it feels really bad if you're taking in a Windstrucks team and then you're going against another one and they're faster than you. Uh, you can just get rolled. So, also, she's amazing in in other forms of content. I was using her a ton in Void Tower and Void Tower Hard because she has a lot of other good things about her kit. So. First of all, the Void Tower is where speed really matters. Like people are like 170 to 180 speed. So being able to speed up all of my damage dealers to be able to not only do enough damage, but to actually go first, fantastic, because they do a ton of damage there. But then also being able to refresh in the cooldown of an ally's ultimate, which is awesome in clearing waves, especially really hard waves. Um, being able to refresh like Euron's ult or being able to refresh just characters that have really impactful ults over and over because of this is awesome. You can refresh... Um, you know eve's ult and be or like the lightborn character or whatever and then she's gonna everyone's gonna go again and she can do that again you know back to back it's a very useful ability here and there's so much so much potential combos with this by being able to ult and then be able to refresh it and then ult again very cool and then this even even her auto attack just the speed down apply speed down is is kind of clutch i i've been using that there'll be like one minion that goes faster i auto attack that character and then my damage dealers actually go first. It's just kind of funny. Even little stuff like this is actually pretty impactful by being able to minus 30 speed on a person. Then a passive here, uh, when using an ability, there's a 50% chance to reduce the basic cooldown time of one turn. This ability may only be triggered twice per battle. So uh, kind of nice to be able to pull up these, these cooldowns here again relatively quickly by do, using the move. It's on a three turn. You auto attack, it's gonna go down and be up a little quicker. So very, very good character. Not all, it, I think a lot of people think of her as just an arena specialist, but I think she's more than that. I think she's actually really good. And even if she's not, she's still amazing in just arena. Okay, next we have Celestial Kane, and he's very similar to Mary in the sense that he's going to be giving people AoE Invincible for one turn. He's a little different in the sense that he can heal himself, and instead of giving an extra turn plus immunity, he's going to be taunting people. So he taunts characters on a three-turn cooldown, which I think is cool. Um, his... Uh, in, Invincible's on a four turn instead of a five turn. Uh, he, he's tankier, he has better base stats. Um, and then he also has a very similar thing where when he gets attacked, he cleanses instead of just at the end of the round, he cleanses So and heals. So both of them are very similar kits, but him being able to self-sustain and be able to disrupt as well with the taunt, kind of nice. So you have the choice between Celestial Kane and Mary on how you want to go about it. Do you want to give yourself bonus turns or do you want to be able to disrupt and taunt? And he's going to, um, so same but different kind of thing. And I think those differences really add up. Uh, it's, and one's not better than the other. I think they're different enough, even though their kids seem very similar on paper. Uh, so very useful character. You're going to be taking any hard content that they have these big AOE move. You need to survive. And then once you survive it, you can actually take over and, and win, uh, win that content or beat that boss or whatever. This is going to be your guy. You can take him in Ash. You can take him in. I've seen him in um, Queen of Tides. I've seen him in hard void tower content. He's just a very versatile character that any content that you're struggling with, they're doing too much damage, but you you have the damage yourself to be able to maybe squeak out a win. He's going to be the character that can cheese you some wins here um, and be content that you might not necessarily beat on auto, but you can at least manual it and force it through with this guy. Let's talk about a few of these dwarves here. These are actually really good. So we got Rickard. He's interesting in the sense he has a, he mainly the main part about him is if we look at his base stats, he has high health, high defense, and he has this right here. Deals total true damage equal to 80% of the character's max health to all enemies. What's interesting about true damage in this game is that based on the amount of enemies, it spreads the damage out. So uh, you do 80% true damage or max health, uh, based on your character's max health, but it's going to be spread out on all four of those characters. It doesn't do the same amount of damage to all four. It splits it. And so the more characters you kill, the more damage you'll do. So he actually becomes a pretty big uh, single target nuker when there's only one enemy that he's channeling all this true damage into. And true damage ignores, you know, defense and all that stuff. It's just flat damage. Like, here you go. You stack up his health as high as you can go and you do flat damage that's guaranteed. But I think it's kind of interesting in this game that based on how many enemies there are, it's going to spread that damage around. Um, and then he has a couple other nice things about the kit where it removes all negative effects, deals 100% damage to an enemy and restores 30% max health, so it's self-sustained, and then he also applies attack down on his A1. So mainly all his damage is going to be coming from his ult here, so you can pair him up with other characters that increase, increase his max health, 
um, you, you're going to just be building him maybe with a little bit of focus and just as much health as possible. Depending on the encounter, you might want a little bit of speed, but very useful character in just how survivable he is, but how much damage he does. It, it's pretty sweet. So you can, um, so very useful in like guild boss, especially the one that cleanses all the buffs. I forget which element does that, but um, he's like the main guy for that. You pair him with Zillin, do a ton of damage. Um, uh, he's great. And you can also uh, pair him with other characters like Windstrax, for example, or people that reset cooldowns. You can do Mary, um, uh, give him bonus turns. So he's constantly proccing this as much as possible. There's a whole bunch of potential options you can do with this guy and really take advantage of this guy's ult. He, he's really great. So, um, and then speaking of him, another top 10 character is going to be Harkin here. And a lot of people pair these two together and you're going to see these guys on a lot of arena defenses, but they're, they're kind of a duo, but I think Harkin is fantastic to bring into other teams by himself. He's not just a, a person you pair with, uh, Rickard, even though, uh, they synergize great together because of this move here where deals 150% damage to an enemy and grants max health up to all team members, max five stacks. So you can stack this five times as long as everyone survives. Um, if the person um, that has the stacks dies then and gets revived, the, st the stacks start over. For example, you take him in, you take Rickard, and then you're not only increasing the survivability of your team, but you're increasing Rickard's damage. So that's a very popular combo. And then also is a great passive where, especially when ascended, Grants team-wide defense bonus equal to 10% of this character's defense rating. He has S-tier defense, so it's going to be very easy to scale him up. Like A lot of the, the Horkins I see have like 3,000 defense, like 3,200 defense. So 10% of that, 20% of that if it's, it's ascended. I believe you got a 5 ascend him uh, to get to that point, um, which is fantastic. Or m maybe you just 2 ascend him. I think you only have to 2 ascend him to, to get to there. But still very good regardless. And then he is... Auto attack synergizes as well with his ult, where deals 50% damage to an enemy with an 80% chance to reduce the cooldowns of this character's ultimate ability by one turn. So um, just make sure you're auto attacking as much as possible and to get this up as much as possible, especially if you're going for that record combo. Um, but his A2 is still really good as well, where it deals 100% damage to an enemy and applies taunt for one turn. Taunt's super impactful in this game and then damage skills with this character's defense. So this is going to be by far his hardest hitting move, um, and it's going to be disrupting the enemy team. So it's a hard choice sometimes between the taunt and then the auto attack. But this guy, any hard content that you need to survive with, he's a great person to put in. Uh, I've taken him into dungeons. I've taken him into a uh, hard tower, um, a, a guild boss even. You know, like there's so many. He's just a very useful, um, very versatile character that... Um, is going to help with survivability in a lot of different game modes. So easily makes the, the top 10 list here. Let's talk about one of the most popular. I would say this is probably one of the most used epic characters in the game is going to be Nathalia. Easily one of the hardest damage dealing characters. It's because of how her passive works. This character right here made me uh, kind of feels bad that I ended up picking Hydri. Uh, because Hydri, you know, a good AoE damage dealer. She's a popular character to start with. Um, but if you look at her modifiers, you got 100% damage to all enemies here. You got 100% damage to all enemies there. She has S tier attack, but 100% is a pretty low modifier for an AOE move. But then you look back over here to Nathalia. I, I'm just trying to give a base that a lot of people know who Hydri is. I'm just trying to break it down because Hydri is a character that a lot of people start with. They're both blue characters. And in this game, you want to have damage dealers in all types because um, the, the elemental advantage is so high in this game that... You can have an AoE damage dealer in blue, but you're also going to want an AoE damage dealer in red. You're also going to want one in green, for example. Just because you get the 50% damage boost, it's just too big to ignore. Um, so if I already have an AoE a water character in Nathalia, I'm going to wish I had a different one uh, instead of just two of the same um, element. It's just, it feels redundant, especially if I'm always going to be picking Nathalia. So why is she so much better? We look at her kit here, it's it's mainly due to her passive. So for every positive effect this character has, their abilities affect one extra enemy. And uh, that means even her auto attack, based on how many buffs she has, she will, her auto attack alone will AoE. So that means if you keep buffs on her, she's always AoEing. Um, and then it's already doing 100% damage. And then you pair her with William, for example, that's 150% damage just on her auto attack. She's already hitting in an AoE on her auto attack harder than Hydri does. And she's giving herself uh, random setups every time she does that. Synergizes well with counterattack. And then uh, her passive 
applies attack up and immune for two turns if this character is buffed uh, by a positive effect at the start of the turn so cooldown three rounds so this doesn't happen often but this is insane so she's giving herself attack up and immune so she can't be cc'd and she's increasing her own damage um she's um, also synergizing with her passive by being able to hit more enemies even with her auto attack and then you can synergize well with like a william is great with her a brand is another good option where you always have buffs you can put her in a guard set so she always has a buff up right at the start of the match um and you're going to be proccing this passive and then she's going to be not only aoeing but has attack up by herself doing a ton of damage then lastly her ult here which is not a hundred percent modifier like Hydri, but 180% modifier. And then if the enemy is killed, this ability cooldown is reset. So absolutely insane. And then not only on top of all that, um, she has this, where, where with if you get her two ascended, for every positive effect this character has, their abilities affect one extra enemy and damage is increased by 10%, which is just hilarious because you get like three effects that's 30% extra damage already on modifiers that are comparable to characters um out there without this effect it's just she's just so much better than in the water faction she is by far the best aoe damage dealer by a long shot it's just not even close the only bad thing about her i would say is that she's incredibly squishy like double c tier is not what you want to see when it comes to the survivability department but i think she's well worth it based on all the positive things she does and it's not that she's just a little better she's a lot better than these other aoe uh, damage dealers and she's only an epic you know yes um, she, there's no way to guarantee her. There's no way to, you know, force the issue. But once you pull her once, then you can start planning and getting those epic ascensions and getting her to ascension two, at least. Uh, I think she's absolutely the best at ascension three because that's when you get 15 more speed. Um, but so hopefully you at least pull her once so you can save those ascensions and get her to ascension three because that speed really comes up clutch that 15 extra. So you can get all the damage you want, um, uh, while not sacrificing, uh, the speed um and being able to at least go 140 speed uh with her so she amazing character easily um if i was organizing this probably either one or two uh, probably right up there with william in one of the most impactful slash good epic characters and then lastly let's talk about another free-to-play friendly character in zatlux here so zatlux great character in the beginning of the game you're going to appreciate him a ton he's um, what he essentially did the whole point of him is he's a wave clear specialist and how he clears waves is going to be this move here where it deals 200 200 damage to an enemy plus bonus damage the fewer enemies remaining the higher the bonus damage dealt if this character if this ability kills the target then launches a bonus attack so he essentially what he's doing is he's killing one person and then he gets bonus damage and attack up and he just kills everyone else uh, which is awesome and then right here he he gains 30 percent crit rate and 30 percent precision so he's always um, you, you can gear him a lot easier because his crit rate is so low. So especially the earlier you use him, he's going to be really good early game, but he's pretty easy to gear too. So he, he's awesome. And I think a lot of people really like to target this guy, especially the earlier the game is. But then he also scales to the late game um, because he's one of the best clearers. He's one of the best clearers for um, the water tower. So you can use, you still use him all the way through. You're never going to drop him, even though he only provides damage. And that's really all he brings to the table is just does he kill the minion yes and then he's super impactful or no and then he's just kind of useless because his auto attack is not too much to write a home about it's just deals 100 percent damage to an enemy and grants speed up to this character speed up doesn't really do much for him and then lastly upon defeating an enemy resets the character's ability cooldowns so and then this part right here his ascension is great too because not only does it reset the cooldowns but it gives him attack up so it's going to make it to where if you can barely kill one of these characters, you're getting the bonus damage plus the attack up. You might it might force you to kill all the characters. Um, so it's it's really helpful there. But he's also like Nathalia, where he has C tier health, C tier defense, but he has S tier crit rate, A tier attack. So he's a character that the earlier in the game you are, the more you're going to want to all in this guy, um, and he's going to carry you through a ton of content. For the 10th one, I couldn't figure out one that was like clear a cut above all the others. So I'm going to kind of rapid fire some epics that I like. Okay, first one, first rapid fire is going to be Myla. I think she's really cool in the sense that she she's a disruptor. And she's going to be good in Arena, good in Void Tower, uh, good at clearing waves. Where she has this passive attacks have a 30% chance to apply Frozen to the target for one turn. Plus 10% negative effect on the target. Uh, targets, then so Frozen 
Target's unable to act and takes 50% more damage from all sources. Attacks on the target have 50% chance to remove this effect. So um, nice for disrupting the enemy team. Um, she, has a, she has a good ult here where 100% damage to all enemies. Damage scales with the number of negative effects. So you can combine her with other people that are applying stuff. And she'll do probably decent damage. It's hard to say how much the damage scales with negative effects is actually going to increase the damage. But mainly you're not bringing her for that. You're just bringing her to come in and CC the enemy team. Kind of the bummer thing about her is that she has C tier speed, uh, I would say. She also can self-sustain a bit by 100% damage to an enemy, and this character is affected by negative effect, grants a shield to this character for two turns, kind of helps her survive a bit there. And then she's also providing defense down. So a solid character, um, be able to help you clear waves a little bit. Like She's like a budget version of Tia, um, in a sense. Um, and in some ways, uh, a little better because the especially when you ascend her um being able to apply that frozen 50 percent of the time is, is actually pretty great now let's go back to the dwarves we have lord rick um similar to rickard but a little different so this guy um if you're dealing with negative effects you might want to bring this guy because it is uh, passive if this character has any negative effects restores 10 percent max health at the start of the turn he has an attack down on his auto attack um which is awesome being able to have such an impactful move right there on the auto attack he has this very interesting passive where it removes all crowd control effects from this character when this character is affected by crowd, uh, control effects and there's a hundred percent chance to use an ultimate ability to counterattack and be triggered once every round and then his ultimate ability is is awesome deals a hundred percent damage to all enemies and then removes one positive effect from targets damage scales with the this character's max health so he's just like record in that sense he has a tier health you're going to be able to stack his health up pretty high and he's going to do a lot of damage these survivable characters that also do damage are, are great for well, um, many parts of the content. Um, you're going to be probably facing a ton of these guys on arena defense um, or when you face people on arena. So just be prepared on what you're seeing here that you're facing a guy that's doing good damage, uh, lowering your attack, and is d doing damage based on their own survivability. So great character. And then uh, another one, a good damage dealer in the orcs here is going to be Orca. Um, main part about him is going to be his ultimate here where it removes all positive effects from a target and then deals 200% damage. Damage from this attack scales the target's max health. He's going to be great in the Tupla raid um, or in the Tupla dungeon. Um, he also has this passive where it's when attacking there's a 30% chance to combo and deal 30% damage to all enemies and then crit rate increases to 100%. So it's always going to crit there and then he uh, it, you know does a little bonus damage there. And then he also has defense down with 100% modifier on his on his A1. And then he also 150% damage to an enemy and then recovers health equal to 50% of the damage dealt. So he kind of kind of sustains himself just a little bit, but mainly it's going to be by bringing this um, nice ultimate there that's going to do a ton of damage the, the further you go up in dungeons because they're going to have more max H HP. Okay, we have Virgil here. This guy's pretty interesting. He has very high speed. He's just kind of like that Windrex level of speed. There's still a few characters in the game that are higher than them. Um, but he has this passive here where it grants this character a 20% chance to apply arcane sanction at the end of any enemy's turn This character will convert four rage at the end of the turn into a bonus turn And then arcane sanction is this character takes damage equal to 10% of the max health and suffers sounds for one turn So arcane sanction insane passive then he has a 100% damage to an enemy and removes one of their positive effects then grants one rage So being able to remove positive effects on the auto attack is actually pretty useful relatively rare i would say then his a2 deals 100 percent damage to all enemies plus 100 percent bonus damage if the target is affected by silence and now he silences people is through his passive and then also this where it's deals 120 percent damage to all enemies applies silence to the target for one turn and grants two rage so uh, pretty good disruption ability you'll probably see these people on uh, in arena having a fast virgil because he has eight tier speed here uh, it doesn't do too much damage Fortunately, he has at least decent survivability, not great. I wish he had a little bit more because his is all about just trying to survive and then having them use this passive here, like being able to auto silence people if the, this arcane sanction lands and then also just landing this, just going first and landing this and having everyone silence so they can only auto attack um, right off the start of the game and then you just go in and, and finish them off. So very good character. Here's a character just like him, but, but instead of doing silence, she applies taunt. And for someone like this, you definitely need to have better survivability. So A tier health and A tier defense definitely help her out a lot there. Uh, she also has 100% damage to an enemy and applies stun for one turn. The ability cooldown is reduced by one turns when attacked. You know, ideally probably stunning someone and then ulting 
or maybe you have to ult first. If you stun first, you'll be able to reset this cooldown almost immediately because everyone's going to attack you. Because she's, I believe she's the only character in the game that has an AoE taunt, which is very impactful. And then lastly, your auto attack here, 80% damage to an enemy and grants immune to this character for one turn. And then lastly, upon the death of an ally, reduces the cooldown of this character's ultimate ability by one turn. And then when you ascend her, on the death of an ally reduces the cooldown of this character's ultimate by two turns in that case you'd have to pair with the reviver if you're going to be really trying to take advantage of that but solid character if you're looking for more survivability by disrupting the enemy team so i think she's definitely going to be up there i'm thinking void tower she's going to probably be pretty good um depending on how hard they hit if she can actually survive the hits then sure um and then lastly, this is like the super caveat, but I just want people to think about this guy because he's potentially amazing, which is Jacob. You need a five ascend him for him to actually be good. But if we look here, um, his ascension effects permanently grants invisible um, in game. Then he has this passive, randomly selects one ally at the start of every round. Every time that ally uses a basic ability, this character launches a joint attack with the, their own basic ability. So it just randomly picks one at the start of every round. Um, then la like, then he has this auto attack here, deals 80% damage to an enemy um, with a 100% chance to apply Intrigue 3, max 20 stacks, grants this character one rage. So every time he auto attacks, he's granting, uh, getting Intrigue stacks, and he's also uh, building rage. Then what Intrigue 3 does is minus 20 defense, max 20 stacks. So he's sl it's a flat defense reduction, slowly stacking then his ult on a three turn cooldown expends all rage to enter a state of madness and madness uh, using abilities boost attack um, grants one bonus turn for every one rage spent exits the madness state after all bonus turns are used up so uh, you build up a ton of rage looks like the maximum amount of rage does it say doesn't say that if there's any maximum amount of rage and then you just go over and over and over again and then you're going to be constantly decreasing their defense going to be um getting bonus attack up here you're you're invisible so you can't die they can only aoe you down which is insane so a great character but you know obviously takes a massive investment um and let alone you gotta pull them then you gotta you be willing to use five of those epic ascensions or pull duplicates of him to ever get to that point but still uh, I think he's uh, potentially a great character. For this list, guys, I know that there's a lot of other good epics in this game that I did not cover. I just think these are the best ones. I'm, I'm curious to know if there's any other epics that you guys have had good success with in this game. Definitely share your stories down in the comments because I know that there's a ton of other good epics here. I'm not saying these are the only good ones. I'm just saying I think these are the best ones. So that's going to do it for this one, and I hope you guys have a good one. Peace.